It should come to no surprise that I'm an angry man. I get angry at a lot of things. For example, I get angry when I don't prepare Cuban coffee the correct way because you try to use aspartame as a substitute for real sugar because of your diet. Mm. Which brings me to my second point. I hate YouTubers that start their videos making coffee. Yeah, I get it. We've all seen that Peter McKinnon video where he pours the coffee grounds into the actual container by putting a GoPro inside of the carafe. I get it. Then they go off to hold the coffee cup in the frame the entirety of the time they're doing their intro. Well, you know what? It's time to put the coffee down. Oh, you're so casual making your little cup of coffee and then doing a YouTube video. Do you know how annoying it is? Especially with a kitchen as small as mine, to set up the camera and to put the lights. At some point, I just stopped caring. I just wanted to get through it. And it's really obnoxious to set up all the shots. Yeah, okay, super casual. So today I'm gonna be showing you guys a very bold card control. It's bold, but it's easy. Some of you guys might like it. Here, check it out, watch. Any card is selected by an audience. Let's say with their dirty little hands, they decided to pick on the nine of hearts. We're gonna lose that card somewhere in the middle of the deck, but please don't forget the nine, sir. So that card goes into the middle, we lose it deep into the deck. It's not on top, it's not on the bottom. But watch, sir, with a simple snap of my fingers, and that's all it takes for your card to make it directly to the top of the deck. Did you see it? It was in the snap. I'll do it again, watch. I'll put that card in the middle, as fair as fair could be. It's when I snap my fingers that that card jumps to the top. Can you believe that some people do that? unironically. My friends, I'm sure you guys know about the Pick Cake Magic Academy, where $5 a month gets you two videos every single week going over card and coin stuff. Also, if you join the Mentalism Academy, you get access to a whole tier of mentalism style tricks. I upload five videos every single week to the Academy with over a thousand videos and counting so far. So make sure to join the Pick Cake Magic Academy for only $5 a month, $10 if you join a mentalism tier. But you know what? I think it's well worth it. Rave reviews all around. So make sure to check it out. The link is in the description section below. So this is a fairly easy control as you can imagine and it takes the thing to here, to chest height, right? Too many times we're busy doing crotch magic where they're staring at the inside of our frenulum. We don't want that. So here it's a nice control, brings it to this level and it takes place under heavy misdirection. So you're not gonna get caught. Usually when it comes to this particular bold insertion control, what takes place is uh, the spectator picks a card in this case, they pick a, a queen of hearts. That card is just placed in the middle of the deck, squared up, and that's it. No, no, that's not enough. It's not enough anymore. So here's how you make it bulletproof. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a, a participant select a card. Let's say it happens to be the uh, square two of diamonds. Refer to my Squid Games video for the uh, use of this particular card. And then you're gonna riffle up and have your thumb stop somewhere in the middle. So notice the action here. I'm showing them their card which I'm holding, then I riffle, showing them that I'm gonna put their card in the middle. Then I return to show them the card. However, this time, here's what's taking place. I've actually taken the time to let go of that separation that I made, and now I'm just pulling back on that top card. So this is taking place as I show the spectator the card one last time and tell them to please remember it. Now look at this. The implication is that that card is going into the same gap, the same slit, that I just showed them a moment ago. But really, look where it's going. It's going right there directly underneath the top card of the deck. It's like a reverse tilt, depth illusion, gazinta move. And now look at this, that card goes somewhere apparently in the middle of the deck. And it looks very fair, especially from this angle. Of course, if we tilt down, you see exactly what's going on. That card is going second from the top of the deck. But after that movement, we just squirt up into the deck. And now I like to bring the deck back to this position and dribble it which implies that, uh, well, I'm dribbling the half that is above their card back on top of subsequent half. So at speed, it's very powerful. The spectator touches any card. You show it to them, please don't forget it. We're gonna lose your card somewhere in the middle of the deck, but really don't forget it because sometimes people forget their card and it's very embarrassing. And that's it, that's the control. So this control does leave the card second from the top of the deck. Please don't snap and bring it to the top. Don't snap your fingers, right? That's. 
uh, as the middle schoolers call it, gay. But now you have that card second from the top of the deck. So if you want, you could show the card not to be on top, not to be on bottom, and uh, throw that card in the middle. And of course now, it's directly controlled to the top of the deck. So here it is one more time at speed for those of you guys that might be from the uh, Yorkshire part of the UK because Lord knows you guys need instruction as slow as possible. So here's the move, right? You're gonna have them touch whichever card they want. You're gonna take it out and show it to them and say, please don't forget it. We're gonna lose your card somewhere in the middle of the deck, but it's important that you don't forget the card. And of course, look, Look, all I've done is lift that card and I'm also angling it so that it's parallel to my body. That goes without saying, right? That goes without saying that you're not like this and then putting the card in there. That I'm like this, angling towards my body. So now I could take that card, put it into the gap and close the gap up. And I'm gonna square that bad boy up. Again, this is what's actually happening. So you're tilting this away from them so that it looks like it's going into that same gap, the same slit that you made previously. So here it gets squared up. And now I just dribble the cards as I re-angle the cards back. So now they're parallel to the ground, right? So it looks like a nice little thing. Your card's not on top or on bottom. That's an optional display. But of course, now you know that their card is second from the top of the deck. Oh, yes. Now, some properties of this particular control that you might enjoy, it keeps the deck in the same order. Also, the top card doesn't change. So let's say, for example, that uh, the top card is a joker. Right, then you go, uh, here, uh, sir, believe it or not, the Joker is actually a wild card. It's a wild card. I'll show you what I mean. Please touch any card you want. That one right there, good. The ace of clubs. Of course, I wouldn't say that, but I'd say your card, please remember it. I'm going to lose your card somewhere in the middle of the deck, but don't forget it because then things get awkward. And uh, well, I don't want it to get awkward because then it gets weird. But we'll lose your card somewhere in the middle of the deck, never to be seen ever again. Of course, it doesn't matter because the Joker saw your card. And I don't know if you remember that I told you, sir, but the Joker is a, is a wild card. And it's wild for many reasons. Number one, it likes to partake in a lot of eight balls and ketamine at questionable clubs at three o'clock in the morning. But that's not the other reason it's wild. As a matter of fact, hold your hand out, sir. Hold your hand out. Yeah, perfect. I'm going to put this Joker in your hand. And why don't you put your other hand on top of it? And just think of your card as you say, ooga booga, ooga booga, over and over again. Yeah, great. It turns into your card. It's a wild card. You see what I mean? And all I've done there is just a top change. That's it. So all I've done is just taken the opportunity for the misdirection while they hold their hand out, do a top change, right? Put that card in their hand and you have the classic effect of a card turning into their card. But it has a reason. It's a joker. It's a wild card, right? So it's, it has a reason. It's not just done without reason. And um, it's just a simple trick, but it gets them every time. It's a fun control. It's interesting, right? You have the misdirection. It's heavy. You could do it. A lot of times people are worried about, oh man, they're going to catch me. They're not going to catch you with this one. As long as you practice the technique, right? You practice it over and over again. Don't just think you could do this, even though it's easy and bold, you're not going to be able to slam it, right? So make sure to practice it because if you don't practice it, you're not going to slam it. And by slamming, I mean them. You almost want to tell them what you're doing because it's so clever. My friends, I'm doing streams every Wednesday and every Sunday. Now, here's the thing. I've been having a little bit of issues. I've had some problems as of late getting my internet sorted out and getting everything connected. I thought it was fine. I thought I could do them, but it turns out I, I found a problem. I need to put the machine near the window. So it turns out that that's what was uh, causing all my woes. So if you were part of the other streams that I've done uh, and uh, were angry at the fact that, well, it wasn't working, well, now they work. Now they work, hopefully. So uh, this Wednesday, I'll be doing another stream and uh, hopefully addressing some other fun stuff in the world and or magic community. So I guess just some tips at the end of the video, right? If you're making a, a colada, as the Cubans like to call it, you need to make sure that you're patient, right? And that you're not trying to shoot a little dumb video, a dumb intro for your stupid magic control. Okay, so you need to be very patient when it comes to it. And also don't use aspartame, don't use substitute sugar, you need to use real sugar. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to take the calories, you're gonna have to take the unnecessary amount of uh, sugar into your system, but it's worth it for the magic that is a Cuban colada. And it's a very wonderful drink, especially if you get the, uh, the espuma down, right, of what you get when you use real sugar. So you get a nice little bit of a crema on top, right? And lets you enjoy the flavors of it more. And uh, when you make it, don't put it on medium, put it on low medium. So put it right between and be patient. 
because you don't want to burn your coffee because then it tastes bitter. So it's a, it's a process. It's a science. A little bit of a tip for those of you guys. And also, if you ever do come to Miami and you go to anywhere where they sell coladas, they're 75 cents. They're 75 cents. And they give you like seven cups and they give you like a, like a giant white little cup that you can use to share it with people. Don't pay more for that. It's 75 cents, right? 50 cents, I've seen it. So don't pay a dollar fifty, two dollars for a colada. You're getting ripped off. It's seventy-five cents. 